Comment on the Doomed Week videos for your chance to win the rulebook. We will choose three winners, one from the YouTube comments, one from OnTabletop.com, and our Cult of Games members get an extra chance to win. Hello folks, today I'm going to be taking a look at kit bashing for the doomed, uh, your standard converting, uh, and then a bit of green stuff work as well to make my monstrous alien race of the reborn. All right, I thought before we get stuck into the uh, kit bashing and converting, I thought we'd have a quick look at the scrapper sprue because it is brand spanking new um, from North Star. So obviously this is for Stargrave. Uh, but as you can see, five bodies, uh, a whole slew of heads on both sides, and weaponry in between. Uh, so if we start at the top here, uh, we have some additional little pouches and paraphernalia, including uh, ammo clips, uh, magazines, whatever you want to call them, some shells, grenades, uh, a whole mixture of things. Um, we have our heads, of which there are uh, quite a few, I think, maybe 20, 5, uh, 10, 13, 16, 21, okay, 21 heads, there you go, it's not bad, and they are a mix of human and alien, as we've seen on some of the other Stargrave sprues, so the um, Cyclopean looking fella here with his little sort of uh, woolly beanie hat on. Um, we've got the bug-looking fellow, the grumpy fish, whatever. Uh, a nice range of additional sort of bits like visors, uh, respirators as well. Weapon-wise, um, a lot of, I would say, modern weapon rather than sort of sci-fi laser weapon. Scrappers, after all, are sort of make, do and mend. Uh, so we have things that look noticeably like machine guns or assault rifles. Uh, some scoped, some not. Uh, there's a couple that actually have um, sickle clips attached to them. This one here, you might be able to see there. It's actually double width because he's got uh, one tape to the other back to back for quick changing, uh, which is a, a nice little feature. Uh, there's a lot of sort of additional parts like that, like uh, weapon wraps or cloth where potentially it's something that's been cobbled together. Uh, there's a few backpacks on the bottom, along with other holsters and grenades and the like. So here we have one with some rope, and here we have one with additional sort of kit on it. So you get a, a good variety of weapons um, that you can mix and match. There is also, if you see there, we have a number four. So. It mirrors the alternate hand. Now, that's a pistol held across the chest. That's what can be clasped up front for a two-handed pistol grip. It's handy that the numbers are there for the, the arm, so you can make sure that the right weapon and right arm gets paired. But again, you could just completely ignore that and put them together whatever way you want. Uh, so there we have it. Nice. Interesting set of components. Um, the bodies themselves, and you'll see when I clip one off in a moment, they have a, a sort of a noticeable seam line around uh, the edge where the, the two halves of the mold come down. However, um, they are relatively quick to clean off and they're not impacting any of the detail on the figures. So, with that in mind, uh, let's talk about kit bashing then. Okay, there are lots of different ways to convert stuff, the simplest being kit bashing. If you have heard the term but aren't aware of what it means, it very simply means to take two different, two or more different kits, model kits, put them together and create something new out of them. Uh, so in this case, you could take your scrappers and take something like 
a Frostgrave demon box and take the weapons from one and maybe the head uh, and then add it to the body of another. And that at its very basic is, is kit bashing, um, just finding new ways to combine things. Now, with North Star's Frostgrave and Stargrave and Oathmark kits, they're all cross compatible. Um, you may find with some, you may have a little bit of tweaking to do, either having to reposition or recut something. But for the majority, the paired arms from these will fit onto the other Stargrave kits and onto the other Frostgrave kits as well. So if I want to take something like one of these human knights or soldiers with a bit more feudal armor and give him a uh, drum mag rifle, then that's very simple to do. Um, when you get into kit bashing a bit further though and converting, you may need to use additional tools or components or if you're using kits from multiple manufacturers, so um, using some North Star kits along with uh, Great Escape Games, Cowboys, you may find the heads are close to matching, but there might be a bit of cutting to do. If you want to make a, a sort of a Cowboy Western crew, um, or you might want to use some fantasy components from Mantic, whoever. Uh, so that type of kit bashing you tend to end up having to use a putty of some description, or maybe there's a lot of plastic card involved, that sort of thing. Um, if our editor is listening, maybe we could throw in some of the pictures of the kit bashes that myself and Ben did using these scrappers, along with some of the other Frostgrave kits to make our uh, gang members for the doomed here. So hopefully you can now see some of the more feudal soldier components being used um, alongside the scrapper weapons and vice versa, some of the scrapper bodies with my own kits and more of the fantasy weapons and addition of demon tails and that sort of thing um, to make my mutants. So there is that. Now, for the purposes of this, I am going to make a leader carrying a large two-handed weapon um, but I want the leader to be a little more muto and creepy than usual. Uh, with that in mind I'm going to go ahead and use a mixture of um, plastic card to make uh, components to attach to a weapon and then I'm also going to use green stuff to change um, one of these bodies into a mutant. So I have a rough idea that I want to replace the legs with tentacles. So I'm going to go ahead and use this body as my base. So I'm going to clip that off uh, and I'll be back in one moment. Okay, so I've clipped off my parts. I want this to be a two-handed weapon. So I'm going to use this, but any, any pair of arms that would work for the haft would do the job. You can see here that uh, seam line I was mentioning earlier. It's just a, a second's work to run a blade down it. And away it goes. Same on the other side. Run a blade down it. And we're sorted. There we go. It's as much clean up as these need. Get the top of the pocket. Now, I want this to be my leader. And I want them to be, like I say, tentacled and imposing. So, first thing we're going to do is cut his feet off. Off they pop. Now, give that stampage a bit of a clean up. And the next thing is to decide the height that he's going to be. Uh, because even though his feet were there, I can have him being much taller if I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and drill a hole in the bottom of this coat.
This will end up being masked by tentacles in the end. I just want to pop something in there, like a bit of wire, just so I can adjust his height and put him on a base. Okay, so hill hole drilled. Wire can go in and I can choose how tall it's going to be now. And then base it in some way. So I'm just going to take a pair of old clippers and clip that off. Not going to go on a base yet, so I'll grab a cork and uh, I'll be back in one second. Okay, so like I say, just popped in a cork, bit of glue to secure it, and now we're just going to add tentacles. I kind of want a writhing mass of tentacles coming out from all over the place. I've already gone ahead and mixed up some green stuff and then used a little um, tentacle roller to just put some texture onto some green tubes at the moment. Um, but all I'm going to do is cut these and then add them to the model as tentacles so there'll be a bit of uh, stretching. I don't want to stretch it too much because I don't want to lose the detail that's on it, the texture that's on it. But then just start applying them around the uh, the creature. The nice thing about this cork is it's roughly the same size as the 25 mil base that it's going to end up going on. It's uh, a little bit smaller, so if I overextend slightly. I'm not going to be too far off where it needs to be on the base. So just start adding my tentacles. And I'm just going to work my way around and attach these. Um, now, I can use a bit of glue on one end just to secure it. Green stuff is relatively adhesive. Uh, although I've left this sitting for a little while because I prefer to manipulate it when it is starting to cure up a bit. So if you need to, you can glue the tentacles on. Uh, otherwise, you can just kind of work them into the surface and go along like that. So I should be back in a moment with my tentacles attached. Okay. I've added my tentacles. Bum, 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 bum. Suitably monstrous and uh, creepy. Could add some more, but I think that's all right for the time being. I am toying with the idea of replacing that respirator with a face full of tentacles as well. But I'm going to do the weapon while that's sort of setting up. Uh, and the weapon's going to be fairly easy. Um, I want a, a sort of a, a vicious circular saw blade as a two-handed weapon. So I'm going to use this pair of hands first. So I'm just going to go ahead and I will remove what I don't want, which is the top of that flail. And you can be quite exacting with this, or you can just kind of lump it off and then go in afterwards uh, and tidy up and fix any uh, issues that you've run into. So you don't need to be particularly exacting uh, when it comes to this. So all I really want to do now is get the arms aligned. I'm just going to use a bit of um, Tamiya Thin because I'm all out of my nice plasti weld. Shame. Hands actually going to come up a fair bit. Get those set. Give it a touch of the old glue. 
and it should be dry very shortly. For the, the chain blade itself, I'm going to make that out of just white sheet styrene or plastic hard. Um, so I've got a few bits pre-cut for that. I have my circular saw blade. Uh, I have a couple of pieces to hold it in place. And then I'm also going to use some white styrene rod to pin it together. And then I've also got a few bolts punched out of um, the same plastic card uh, that I can then use to secure it all. So first things first, I'm just going to snap these pre-scored pieces off. They are not 100% identical. I didn't measure them out. I just roughly eyeballed it. Because I don't mind, these are crazy mutant scrappers in a terrible doomed world. So if they don't fit exactly, it just gives a rough ready look to the, uh, to the piece. I will require a hole in my circular saw somewhere near the middle as well. And I say that is close enough to the middle that, that will do me. So I'm just going to drill a pilot hole in. And then I shall widen it out with a larger drill. I haven't decided how I'm going to do the teeth on it yet. Um, my initial thought is I will file them in using a wedge file, but I may not do that. I may go another way. Let's just clean that out. Do. It's going to give it a few twists through from both sides to make sure I'm getting a wide a as wide a, a hole there as I can because this is a relatively snug fit with the uh, plastic card. It's going to remove the burr off either side. Hopefully that should fit through. And it does. So that will be one. And then it will butt up against that. So I'll end up with a essentially a a fork holding the disc in place. And then I can just trim this off. And because this is all sheet styrene, it means it glues, well, rather it welds with the polystyrene cement uh, and the other plastic pieces. Uh, so let's just clean these. I feel like I've tossed a bit away or lost a bit somewhere. I'm sure it will reappear probably on my hand. Mm. I did throw it on the floor. The editor to the rescue, please.
Okay. Hopefully you can see that. I'm just going to take one of those off cut pieces from earlier. And this will become a cross piece to join this onto. So I'm just going to take a pair of snips and I'm going to remove this. Now I could leave that with the bolt sticking through it, which you may or may not be able to see. Uh, I'm actually going to cut it relatively flush because I want to put those big hexagonal nuts on there instead. And then I'm just a bit of glue on there, a bit of glue on my base plate. And just run it across the bottom. See how square I can make that? The answer is square enough, I think. And then some poly cement on my haft. And on the attachment. And fit that massive disc on. Nope. Some of this I can file down afterwards. But I just want it roughly located for now. And then I want to add some details. So my initial idea is Some form of battery is probably required to run it, which let's say it is stored in one of the backpacks. So I'm going to run a backpack and then is there anything particularly clever here I can steal? Just having a look at the sprue because Bits of guns and pistols and things like that are often very handy for things like this. There's some sort of clever shock button. Let's have you off. It's got a switch on it and everything. Yeah, I think we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Go with that for the time being. Quick clean up on the backpack. To do. Little studs there. I'll just help locate the backpack. And perhaps those uh, ropes on the top now become something like copper 
um, cable or copper wire. The choice is mine when I come to uh, paint it. As I like. How do I like it? Maybe on the back. Yeah. Cut this and glue it to the back of the uh, haft. Try to use those snips a bit easier. Okay. Hmm. You know, sit flat. Bear with. This is the joy of kit bashing. We sometimes have to change things on the fly. Okay, so I've got a little greebly there. The last thing I'm going to do, and I will use super glue for this, is I have another green stuff bit that I've turned into a little bit of a cable. I'm just going to run that from the pack to the uh, butt of the weapon, pommel, hilt, whatever. So. I go from there. Just to give it some charge. And then it's going to come around here. There's another little dab underneath. And cut that. I'll maneuver it in position. Now, that's most of what I want done, done. I'll just pop the head on. And then those hex bolts to cover the join here.
so you don't have to use those. I just like the look. Mm -hmm. Making a break for freedom. And that is more or less my kit bashed leader for my reborn. The only other thing I have left to do then is wait for the green stuff to cure, prime him, and move him to a new base. So I shall do that now. And when I return, you'll be able to see all the little bits and pieces on it. Who knows? Maybe I'll even have cut those teeth into the wheel. Maybe not. Maybe I'll leave it as a pizza cutter. Back in a moment. All right. Back. Kit bash conversion done. As you can see, I've thrown a, a zenith on it so you can see what I've actually done. Um, added the little holster for pistol. I found a magazine that looks like a little sort of exhaust vent that I popped on top of the rippy pizza cutter. And I also popped some little um, teeth onto the wheel just with a, a file, like I was saying, just, just went around it. It's not particularly uh, circular, it's not particularly even, but it doesn't need to be. Um, I popped the base of the mace here, so the top of the mace I popped on to the backpack, uh, which I'll just do up with some sort of weird energy thing along with those copper wires. And obviously I have all my tubing and tentacles. Um, so yeah, interesting little sort of mess around, uh, mixture of kit bashing and then some green stuff converting parts. Uh, that's the neat thing about the doomed. Um, you can do pretty much whatever you want. You can just get models straight off uh, a rack, so to speak, uh, or you can do more bespoke stuff of your own, depending on what you want to do, how you want to tell the story. And then the um, the Frostgrave and Stargrave kits from Northstar are, are fantastic. I had toyed with putting these little uh, gorges from the Demon Box on as shoulder pads, but they just didn't sit right. Um, I would have had to do a lot of work to sort of file and bend them into position so in the end i just thought no we'll just leave them off um, because it still gives a really nice finish uh, it looks like the robe is short sleeved uh, and then obviously the tentacles just emanate forth from there so unusual little fellow should be hopefully very good in game so there we have it uh, obviously if you just want to do the simplest type of converting Kit bashing is it. Take a weapon, take an arm, take a head, whatever you need from a different kit, slap it on with a bit of glue and away you go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, we're all done. But if you want to take that extra step, if you want to do a bit more um, subtle maneuvering, a bit of plastic hard work to build weapons or a bit of green stuff work to add fur or tentacles or giant crab claws, then these are all options for you, especially when you're playing the doomed. You can really let your imagination run wild. Uh, hopefully that's been of some help to you. Uh, if it has encouraged you to give kit bashing a go, uh, please do so and let me know how you get on in the comments. If you've any questions or queries, drop them below and I will answer them as well. Until next time, bye bye. Comment on the Doomed Week videos for your chance to win the rulebook. We will choose three winners. One from the YouTube comments, one from OnTabletop.com and our Cult of Games members get an extra chance to win. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.